VORs are one of the more difficult concepts to get in both the private and instrument curriculum, so let's look at a few tips to help understand how they work. The Light Insight Ground Schools cover VORs and other forms of navigation in depth, but let's dive into some fundamentals in this video. First, the basics. Here we are pointed west over Long Island Sound. We can use our VOR receiver to navigate to Block Island, which has a VOR station, Sandy Point, located right on the airport. We'll tune into the station on our NAV-1, which is on the Garmin 530 GPS unit. First, we'll hit the knob that says Push CV to switch the cursor from the COM to the VOR. Then we'll twist the inner and outer knobs to set the VOR frequency, 117.8 and hit the swap button here with the V and double-sided arrow to switch this to the active frequency. We'll want to hit the CDI button to make the receiver track the VOR instead of the GPS. Obviously, there are many different types of avionics, so your procedure may be different in your airplane. Now, we'll want to identify the station. Hitting the NAV1 button on the audio panel allows us to listen to the Morse code, which should correspond with the three-letter identifier for Sandy Point, Sierra Echo Yankee. So we'd like to use the VOR to fly us in towards Block Island. Here's a tip to get oriented. Let's turn the OBS knob on the VOR receiver so that we have our current heading, 290 degrees, set up top on the receiver. After we've matched the VOR receiver to our heading, it'll give us two pieces of information. With the needle swung to the left, the station is somewhere to our left. So it's in this hemisphere on the directional gyro. With the to from flag reading from, the station is somewhere behind us, so it's in this hemisphere as well. In that way, we've narrowed down the station's location as being behind us to our left, which matches up with your current position and heading. So we can make a turn towards the heading within that quadrant of the directional gyro. We'll use something like 150 degrees. While we're in the turn, we can fine tune our navigation by twisting the OBS knob on the VOR towards that 150 degrees. We're looking for the setting that will get the needle to center with a two indication showing. And we get that with the OBS set to about 135 degrees. A 135 course will take us from where we are on a straight line to the station on the island. So that's what we'll turn towards. As we turn though, we get further to the right side of that straight line and notice the needle is no longer centered. It's swinging to the left. If we want to get back on that line, a 135 heading won't do anymore. We'll pass the island off to the right. What we need to do is chase the needle. By this we mean flying a heading that's not equal to what's on the VOR, but something to the left of this, since the needle is to the left of center. A 30 degree offset is usually a good choice. So we'll fly about a 105 heading and watch that needle slowly come back towards center, which means we're correcting back towards that line. Once the needle approaches center, we can turn back to the right to resume that 135 heading and chase the needle in the same manner by making small corrections as we get closer to the station on the island. Now, this is all very well until we add the complication of wind. Let's give ourselves a nice gale coming directly off of our left wing. This will cause us to drift towards the right. Once we regain control of the plane, we notice the 135 heading no longer carries us directly inbound to the station. The needle begins to swing left we'll have to chase the needle and by doing so, fly a heading well to the left of the 135 selected on the OBS. So we'll do a much more easterly heading and we'll need to swim our way into this wind and back towards that line where a 135 course takes us into the station. Once we've got the needle centered, we can turn back to the right. But again, the 135 heading won't keep us on the right course. We'll need to crab left into the wind with something like a 100 heading. Even though our heading doesn't match what the VOR reads, our course does match it. So we're crabbing along that line directly in towards the station. So this is the proper way to correct for wind with VORs. What many pilots do instead is called homing to the VOR. Rather than correct our heading for the wind, we'll correct the VOR. So if we fly a 135 heading and the needle starts to swing left, 
rather than go chase it with our heading, we'll just twist the OBS to a new heading that does center the needle and fly that instead. Obviously, this will require frequent changes and won't allow us to fly inbound along the straight line, but rather on this spiral line, which gradually takes us directly into the wind. Not what we want at all. One of the things pilots struggle with the most on VORs is the concept of radials. Once again, we're flying eastbound towards Block Island and we've taken the wind away. We have 090 set up on the VOR and the needle is centered with a 2 indication. A 090 heading should keep that needle more or less centered as we fly along this line inbound to the station. Let's focus on that 2 from flag for a second. When the needle is centered with the 2 indication, it means that whatever OBS setting we've selected here, 090 degrees, will take us directly from our present position in to the station. Many pilots will say that we're on the 090 radial, but this is incorrect. Radials radiate out from the station. So with a 2 indication, 090 wouldn't take us away from, but rather in towards the station. If we were to start twisting the OBS knob, the needle would swing off center. When we set a heading perpendicular to that 090, like due south, the arrow flips from to to from. Most units will actually not indicate a flag at all here as we've entered the so-called zone of confusion. But what this means is that flying this 180 heading will not move us closer or further away from the station along that direct path. If we keep twisting all the way around, the needle centers now with a from indication. The heading set 270 is the radial we're on. When the needle is centered with a from indication, the heading selected is our current radial. Why from and not to? Radials radiate out from the station. So flying this 270 heading will take us directly away from the station and we'd be flying out on that 270 radial. Now, we're not flying outbound, we're flying inbound. So if we leave the OBS setting alone with a from indication, something odd happens. We notice the needle is drifted just a bit right, as it will from time to time as we're tracking it. Typically, we want to chase the needle, so we turn right a bit. Instead of the needle centered, though, it actually starts deflecting even more to the right. This is called reverse sensing, and it isn't the way we typically fly with VORs, and can add a ton of confusion to an already difficult task. The way to center the needle in reverse sensing is to fly away from it. Sometimes you hear to make believe you're the needle and the course is the center, so fly towards the center to the left. Let's get back to tracking properly and twist the OBS to that heading that will get us inbound. A rule of thumb is that the OBS setting and our actual heading should be generally the same, or at least in the same hemisphere, to make sure we're not reverse sensing. So we'll be able to track normally all the way into the station. What happens as we overfly it is that the receiver begins to get confused. The needle swings very quickly off to one side. We should just hold heading and wait for the flag to flip from to to from. We'll maintain this heading and allow the needle to center up again. Notice that our heading and the OBS setting 090 degrees agree with each other, so we're still on normal sensing, chase the needle that is. And since we're past the station, we're no longer on the 270 radial, but the 090 radial. This is confirmed by the fact that the needle is centered now with a from indication, with 090 set. You may have noticed as we were flying inbound that the needle was getting more sensitive. This is a feature of VORs. The sensitivity increases the closer we are to the station. Here we're only about three miles out from the station. Let's plan a turn perpendicular to the radial and time how long it takes to get the needle to fully deflect. We'll start a timer and make a left turn 90 degrees around at due north. With the needle at full deflection, meaning we're 10 degrees off our radial, we stop the timer at 35 seconds. Let's get back on the radial and try the same thing, only now we'll do it at 10 miles out. We'll start the timer and make the same turn to the north. And what we see is that we don't reach full deflection until 1 minute and 15 seconds. It's not as sensitive further out. Now let's see if you've been able to follow along to this point. What do we want to do if we want to fly back inbound along the same 090 radial? We'd like to turn around, so we'll start that first. 
Now, what to do with the VOR? We want the 090 radial, but we want to fly inbound along it. So don't set 090 up top. Set it on the bottom so the reciprocal 270 is on top. And now chase the needle. You can confirm we've done it correctly if the heading and the VOR setting are in agreement. Radials are great for finding spots that don't have a VOR located on them like we saw on Block Island. Here we're taking off from Taos, New Mexico, which does have a nearby VOR, though we'd like to fly to Okeowinge to the southwest. Using the chart, we see that the airport lies along the 178 radial from the Taos VOR. So if we can intercept that radial, we can follow it to Okeowinge. We're departing runway 22, which puts us on a course to intercept the radial. So we'll tune to the TAS VOR, set 178 in the OBS, notice the needle is deflected right with the from indication, so to get the radial, we want to fly to the right of that 178 course, which is what our departure heading of around 220 gets us. So we'll take off and fly this course. Eventually, the needle comes alive and begins coming towards center. We'll time our turn to the left so that when we roll out on 178, the needle is close to center. Now we follow the radial and watch out for where we meet the river, which is where we'll find our airport. Now finding places on radials has one big drawback. We don't know exactly where along the radial we'll find it, so we'd need other equipment or be able to identify a landmark like that river. However, we won't have that luxury flying in the clouds. Here we're at Crisfield, runway 14, and we'd like to fly to Tangier Island in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay. On our chart, we see that it lies along the 229 radial from the Salisbury VOR. This radial also lies almost directly on top of our departure airport, so it'll be easy to intercept. How will we know when we've arrived at Tangier? What we can do is set another radial from another VOR, which intersects our original one over the island. We'll use the Patuxent VOR on the other side of the bay. Tangier Island lies on the 155 radial from there, so we'll set that up on our number two VOR. Now we'll depart and make our turn towards 229 to intercept that needle on the VOR1. Make sure to ident your VOR as always. We'll fly along that radial on the number one VOR, keeping an eye on the number two receiver below. As we approach, the needle begins to swing towards center. Once it's over center, we're at the intersection of the 229 radial from Salisbury and the 155 radial from Patuxent which we saw is where Tangier Island is. Let's take away the weather and see how we did. And sure enough, we're right over Tangier Island. VORs give us all headaches, and they've become outdated and aren't the most user-friendly. But if you take some time to practice, it'll sharpen your skills and you'll even find your situational awareness will improve. IFR Ground School is in session now. This video is a great sample of the types of training you'll receive in the full course integrating animation and graphic design, simulator and other technology, and focused direct instruction. Dash on over to the website, flight-insight.com for more.